Hi there. Um, welcome to a new video about Code Barrel, an add-on for Jira. I have a guest. It's Andreas Knecht from Vietnam. Hi, Andreas. Hi, Martin. Um, we actually have a, a longer German video, as Andreas is from Austria uh, originally, right? Uh, yep, that's correct, you, but I haven't lived there for 20 years now. Yeah, uh, so he said um, the German would be, uh, video would be more embarrassing, so we did it first to make this one short and concise. Um, you've been 10 years with Atlassian, you're no longer in Atlassian, um, you've been working on Jira, you've started a startup with Nick Minier. What I understood in the German version is that you can basically automate everything that happens in Jira with a simple if this then that visual guide where I can have triggers, where I can say if this happens then please do the following and it's I was very amazed. I, I had to hold uh, back not to um, use improper language for my um, excitement um, about this. So I <laughs> hope that if you're watching this video now in English, that um, you will be as excited when um, Andreas shows that to us. Um, why don't you just start in your Jira? So, so it's called Automation for Jira. There's a free version that runs up to 300 times for your defined rules, totally for free. And this is the paid version. It's available for uh, Atlassian Jira Cloud at this point. And Andreas and his uh, colleagues are working on a server version. He um, said something about two to three weeks, which I think um, is probably something that Nick Manier will be angry about uh, in two to th three weeks. From now, let me fix that. <laughs> Today is the 20th of October, so at the end of November, he definitely wants to have a server version. I'm going to check on this. And, <laughs> no uh, pressure. Uh, no, no, no pressure. Just, <laughs> just fixing dates. And um, yeah, uh, you definitely want to check it out, even if you're on server and it's not available yet. I think it's something you want to look at. Andreas, why did you go ahead and show us uh, really quick? how such yep. a workflow that I can click myself is created and how it works. Yep. So I'll just jump straight into the project admin section here in Jira. Uh, so any project admin can do this. Uh, and the, I guess our goal in designing this add-on was really that they shouldn't need any you know, coding knowledge or knowledge of Jira's internals. Anyone should be able to automate their process with this tool. So I'm just going to jump straight in and create our first automation role here. And we actually come with a bunch of pre-configured templates for some really common processes. Uh, so things like automatically assigning issues, and that's really one click and you can set up a rule. Uh, and we're actively looking for feedback from customers as well to tell us what's missing here and like if there's any other templates that they might need. In the German version, we were talking about um, uh, how complete this is. And you said that for business people, you think it's pretty complete already? and that you have some of the uh, software teams asking for um, coding and software specifics that you're still trying to spec out and uh, create. Um, I, when I look at this screen, I think it's pretty complete also from my shallow business point of view. Yes, I mean, you can do a lot of things in Jira already. Uh, we definitely want to fill in some more gaps around, like, if you want to integrate with, yeah, things like GitHub or Bitbucket, for example. We don't have many integrations with those tools yet. Or, you know, some common continuous integration tools like, well, Bamboo or CircleCI or some of the other, or Travis. Uh, so we don't have much in that area yet. Um, and we're definitely going to continue to add more support for, the, for other tools in the future as well. So I might just jump in and start uh, creating a new rule from scratch here. So we'll just create a, a demonstration rule here. And so rules are really made up of three different components. We've got triggers, conditions, and actions. And so first thing you have to pick is a trigger. So that's really the thing, the if part of the rule. Um, so that really defines when the rule starts off. And we have a bunch of different triggers. So we have all the different issue events, so created, common, and assigned. But we also have a few special ones, like you can uh, kick off a rule on a schedule. So you can run a JQL search on a schedule, for example. 
But for now, I'm just going to pick Create It. Oh, and we also have an advanced one, which is an incoming webhook, which can be used in, like, if you have a script external to Jira and you want to kick off a rule inside Jira, it's a really useful little trigger. But I'll pick Issue Create It here. And then you have a choice of conditions and actions. And conditions are really just something that can stop a rule from executing. So for example, if you want to make sure that the issue that was created is a really high priority issue, we can just use this JQL condition and just look for issues of the highest priority. But then the interesting bits are the actions. So these are the things that then actually do stuff. And once again, we have all the sort of common issue operations like assigning, commenting, creating. Uh, we can create subtasks, we can edit issues. But interestingly, we also have a bunch of third party integrations. So we can send Slack messages and Twilio notifications. And we can send webhooks as well to external systems. And finally, we have also HipChat messages and we can send emails. So we looked at this when we were talking about this in German. So we can very quickly send an email to someone. By the way, codebarrel.io is where you want to go to contact Andreas, just to... Um, so yeah, so creating an email is really simple. You can use HTML tags as well in the email body, for example. And you can add as many of these actions as you want for an issue. So we can send an email, for example, and we could, I don't know, create could some you, subtasks. Could you just go back one step and let me, um, or let the viewers see the actions that could be taken again? I think this is very, yeah. very powerful. And um, if you um, think a little about what you want to do with Jira, basically everything that I can think of in business cases can, could be automated this way um, by, for example, you want to, someone who creates this should do three things afterwards. So you could create new issues, you can um, uh, change stuff, you could um, transition um, issues. Can you actually create other issues? Yeah, it, yep, it has that. Can. Yeah, so yeah. I can go and create an issue. You can <laughs> even create issues in a different project from the one that you're in. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like it. Um, yeah, so create issue is definitely a popular one. Um, a lot of people use transition issue as well. So you can transition an issue to any other status uh, in the workflow using a optional transition match as well if you need that. Um, so yeah, it's, it, I guess it was designed to be, we wanted this to be as simple as possible to get started, but still very flexible and powerful for users in the end. Yeah, can you show us this one that you showed me in the German video um, real quick that you're using actually? The uh, yes, okay. So this is actually a real and an, a real rule that we use in our automation uh, project that we have on Jira. So this is what we use to manage releases. So we have an incoming webhook trigger here, which our release script triggers, and it basically looks for all issues that are currently waiting for deployment. And then it adds a label to these issues with the version that we just released. And it transitions these issues to the done status. And then finally, we also send a Slack message to our um, Slack room telling us that a release has just happened. Uh, so this has really saved us a lot of time because we can, whenever we do a release, we don't have to manually go through and update all these issues anymore and notify people that a release has just happened. It just kind of Boom. gets done automatically by the script. And I can even go into the audit log here, and we can have a look at, so these are all the releases that we've done in the past couple of days. Uh, and you can sort of see a full trace of, hey, these are all the issues that were edited, and we sent a Slack message, and we transitioned these issues to done. Cool. Andreas, um, oh, why should I start using this automation tool? Um, you should start using automation for Jira if really you find that you're spending a lot of time manually moving issues around or just working in Jira manually when if you're doing a lot of repetitive tasks then automation for Jira can definitely save you a lot of time. Okay, um, I would also highly recommend you to, to check this out. It has all add-ons for it and you can try it out for free. Um, Andreas has also set out a light version that you can use free forever. So there's a lot of ways to uh, start doing that. Um, uh, the pricing is 10% of Jira, is that correct? 
Yeah, it's 10% of Jira's uh, cloud pricing mm -hmm. at the moment. And um, then, yeah, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us. You can reach out to Andreas. Uh, have fun with automating your stuff in Jira. Thanks, Andreas. Thank you, Martin.